Hi guys, this is the first in a series of videos about setting up a CCTV server on Unraid. This part looks at the pros and cons of doing this and then compares a bunch of different CCTV solutions that we can run on Unraid to see which one comes out on top. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. Oh, but first, to all of my American friends, Happy Thanksgiving. Right, OK, so CCTV. Now, should we use our server to run our CCTV system? Well, there are two lines of thought there. Firstly, the answer is no, you shouldn't. And why is that? So the people that will tell you that will tell you it's best to have things separate and not to have all of your eggs in one basket. So yes, there's definitely some valid logic there, because if your server goes down, then so would your CCTV. But that being true, anything can break, and so can a standalone system. And if a standalone system goes down, for example maybe a hard drive fails, you may not notice that for a while on a standalone system. However, you'd be much more likely to know of a problem with your server pretty much straight away. And another advantage to the standalone system route is it's probably going to be easier to set it all up. But I think that most of the people watching my channel don't mind putting in a little bit of effort to get something set up. OK then, so let's look at why we should set up a CCTV system on our server. Well, most of us who are running a home server, we've probably got that powered on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So why have another system that's consuming power all of the time? And like I said, noticing problems on your server, you're probably going to deal with them straight away because you'll notice them far sooner. So with that reasoning, you could argue that it's going to be more reliable. And the main reason for me is, well, it's kind of fun. Now, we all like tinkering with our servers, and this is something that really does have a useful purpose. Because, come on, some of the things we set up on our server really is quite pointless, such as just setting up random VMs. You know, like setting up a Hannah Montana Linux VM just to see what it's like. And yes, actually, there really is a distro called Hannah Montana Linux. So with that said, we've got to be grateful for the guys at Lime Technology who chose the name Unraid for their distro, because it might just be a little embarrassing chatting at work and saying, hey, I set up a great Docker container last night on my Hannah Montana server. Right, OK, so enough of the bad jokes and let's move on. So let's take a moment just to stop and think about what we actually want from our system. From the CCTV, we definitely want three things. One. We want to be able to view our cameras from anywhere. Two, we want our cameras to record the footage. And three, probably the most important one, is we need our system to be reliable. So yeah, these three points are pretty obvious. And if we were buying a standalone system, that would be all we'd have to worry about. But if you're watching this video, then you're probably not going to buy an off-the-shelf solution. Or at least, you're considering putting one together yourself. So if we're going to be using our server to also pull CCTV duties, is there anything extra that we should be thinking about? Well, yep, most definitely. As well as the above, we want our CCTV solution to be efficient. Now, we don't want the CCTV to be pegging out our CPU just because it's viewing or recording footage. I don't want to be watching MB or gaming only to have everything glitch because I'm hosting a CCTV system that's just a resource hog. So our choice of what solution to use is very important. We mainly have two routes which we can go. We could use a VM to run our CCTV system, and a lot of people may have a VM running something like Blue Iris on Windows. Or we could be using something like iSpy or Webcam XP. Now that's definitely a way forward, but do we really need to be running a whole dedicated VM with a whole operating system just to record some CCTV footage? So our other option is to use a Docker container. Now that's definitely going to be more lightweight than a VM, so it's probably going to be more efficient. So with Docker, what options do we have? So let's have a look at the options which we can find in community applications. I'm going to do a search for CCTV. 
And that search brings us two results. It brings us Shinobi and Zone Minder. So now I'm going to expand the search and use the term surveillance. Okay, so that brings us two extra containers, Motion Eye and Zioma. So those are some different options to use to set up a CCTV system on our server. And I was saying it's got to be efficient. So I'm going to run some basic tests, nothing too scientific, just something simple to see how much resources each solution is going to use. So the server I'm going to use for these tests is one with an older 4 core Xeon CPU, an E3 1240 V2 and 16 gigs of RAM. So let's look at the VM solutions first. The VM running them is based on a Windows 10 VM with all four cores, eight threads and eight gigs of RAM. So let's have a look at how much resources this VM runs on its own without running any CCTV software. So when the VM is idle with nothing running, we're looking at around eight to 9% CPU usage. So that'll give us a baseline for the different VM solutions we're gonna test. So to make each test as similar as possible, I'm gonna be recording from four 1080p cameras. Now they're going to be set to record constantly unless the software doesn't allow it where it only allows recording by motion detection such as the software motion eye okay so let's start off with blue iris and see how that performs okay so recording on all four cameras my cpu usage is now around somewhere between 64 and 67 percent so blue iris does seem quite resource hungry okay so now let's try i spy again this is recording four cameras and it seems a lot more efficient and it seems to be going between say maybe 26 and 30 percent. So on to webcam XP. Now unfortunately I couldn't get any of my cameras to work with this software and to be honest I really didn't like it at all so I'm going to miss this one out. So let's move on and look at the CCTV docker solutions. But first let's look at the server with nothing running just to get a baseline. So the CPU load with nothing running is about one percent. So now let's have a look at Shinobi running in a container, again recording four cameras. Wow, okay, that's really good. The CPU load is really low, between two and four percent roughly. So that really is super efficient. Okay, so on to one probably a lot of you have heard of before, Zone Minder. Let's have a look and see how that one performs. Again, recording four cameras. Well, this container is using a lot more resources. It's fluctuating from maybe kind of 50 up to 65%. So is Zone Minder. It's quite hungry for those resources. So Motion Eye is up next. Uh, motion Eye is configured to only record when it detects motion. But I think at the moment, most of the cameras have got something kind of moving. Maybe it's just leaves or something. So at the moment, probably all four cameras are recording, but it could just be fluctuating. And we can see here that the CPU overhead isn't too bad. It seems to be in between 16 and 18%. And finally, the last contender, Zioma. And Zioma, it seems quite efficient. It's CPU usage between six and 8%. Okay, so let's have a look at the results a bit more closely on a nice bar graph. So whatever the CCTV solution we're using, Running it in the VM will have more of an overhead. Idle, Docker is using about 1% load, and idle, a VM, is using 8%. So there's an extra 7% straight away. So basically, just for that reason, I won't run CCTV in a VM. I think just using Windows on its own for the sole purpose of running CCTV, I just don't think it's worth it. But maybe if you had some other software that you could only run in a VM as well, then it might be worth running them side by side in the same VM. And if I was running my CCTV system in a Windows VM, then I'd definitely choose iSpy. And not only because it's much more efficient and using less CPU resources, also because it's free and because it's open source. But running a CCTV system in a Docker container is, I think, a much better idea. So looking at the efficiency results here for the containers, Zone Minder for me is just too resource hungry, so I wouldn't use it. Sorry Zone Minder. Now Motion Eye, I did actually really quite like this. It was very easy to set up and use and makes a good basic CCTV system. But it's lacking a lot of features and it's still using more resources than both Zioma and Shinobi. So now Zioma. Well, it's definitely efficient and it is really decent software, but it needs a paid license and I thought their licensing seemed very complicated. 
So for me the winner hands down is Shinobi. Not only in my testing was it only using 3% of my total CPU usage, but it's also open source and it's free to use. So it's Shinobi which I'll go through how to set up in the third part of this series. But before that in the next part, part 2, we'll look at some other very important things. We'll be looking at the various different hardware that you can use, but also we're going to be looking at how to make sure that hardware is secure. We need to make sure that the CCTV system is secure on our network, because there are more ways than you may first think that CCTV can be a security risk on your network. And no, I'm not just talking about cheap Chinese cameras being a risk. So that's part two, and this is the end of part one. But before I wrap this video up, I want to give a huge thanks to all of you people out there that support me, all of my patrons and supporters. Thank you so much guys. I just wouldn't be able to make these videos without your help. And if you'd like to join those great bunch of people, then please see the links in the description below. And as I always ask, if you did like this video, just please take a moment to hit the like button and share it with anyone who you think might find it useful. Well, it's time for me to go now, so whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.